Historically, the Angkor Temple Complex is one of Southeast Asia's most visibly spiritual sites. How can travelers discover the bygone Khmer Empire and its magnificent cities and temples? We're going to be seeing more of the area, which will include the city. Perhaps explore one of the 12th century statue-carved temples dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu or share a home-cooked meal with a family at a local village, or admire a colorful sunset at the world's eighth wonder, Angkor Wat Temple. We love the local people, so we're going there, talk to them, talk to their children, and that help us to bring the experience from the local perspective, local people, to our travelers. The ancient land of Cambodia was the seat of Southeast Asian culture for centuries. This spiritual land and its temples were inaccessible for many years due to the spreading Vietnam War next door, and soon after the devastating rise of the Khmer Rouge. Considered the largest religious monument in the world, Angkor Wat is a temple complex admired for the grandeur and harmony of its architecture, including its bas-reliefs and numerous devitas adorning its walls. This is the type of stuff I love, and it's fabulous. I'm really fabulous. I can't stop smiling. In his writings, the French naturalist and explorer Henri Mouot described the Angkor Wat temple as grander than anything left to us by Greece or Rome. Originally Hindu, then Buddhist, the temple was built by Khmer King Suryavarman in the early 12th century and was dedicated to Vishnu. My dream was far exceeded. It was real, it was wonderful. The definition of the, uh, the carvings on the side and just the, the roundness of them uh, and the, the faces all over, I, I liked it very much. With century-old banyan trees growing out of the ruins, the temple is an experience not to be forgotten. It's so enveloped in trees. I mean, trees are holding up the walls, trees are growing out of the walls. Beautiful trees, too. It's, it's kind of neat. It's a combination of nature and what man has built. Fabulous temple. I mean, it's just incredible. Just unlike anything I've seen anyplace else. Angkor Wat is a powerful symbol of Cambodia and is a source of great national pride. Get to know a local Cambodian family by sharing stories over a freshly cooked meal. My name is Tiva. Yes, daughter of family. My mother has five children, four boys and only one girl. Oh. Oh. Very good. Very good. With the culture, the people, the experiences, it was wonderful. They were very nice and hospitable. The food was delicious. Light up your imagination. Explore the lost cities and temples of Cambodia and learn for yourself why these temples are considered the world's eighth wonder. Hort Chum May, a survivor of the 1970s Cambodian genocide. We found 8,985 skulls of the victim from 
all of these 86 masters. Today we are in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. We are here at the place called Killing Fields. Chum May is one of only 12 known survivors of the Khmer Rouge imprisonment in the S-21 Tool Slang Camp, a place where 20,000 Cambodians were sent for execution. Cambodian people find it is so very important for them to come to visit this site, Killing Field, uh, to see the past of Cambodia. Fried spiders. Today, considered a delicacy, it is believed that Cambodians started eating spiders out of desperation during the years of the Khmer Rouge rule, when food was in short supply. <laughs> The spiders are a species of tarantula called a ping in Khmer and are about the size of a human palm. <laughs> Throughout your journeys, take a moment to slow down and listen to the stories of the people of Southeast Asia. Stories worth telling told by people you will never forget. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are right at the boat dock and we can see our fishman deliver his fish to the markets. This one is a black skin catfish. Come take a look. My friend here is a floating school in this village. And it's a primary school, and more than 200 students are study here, but no student here today. <laughs> here you can see uh, many floating houses. In uh, this community, there's population around uh, 1,300 people. And the houses uh, just uh, stay on the water permanently. Uh, to make the houses float, they use bamboo and uh, oil drums for floating, and for uh, power, they use solar panels and um, uh, car batteries. And you can look at the roof of the houses and people here with the television and banner. So you can see like every family has a television at home, even the home is small, but people enjoy their life and they're happy with, the, with what they have here. And uh, you can see uh, 
Is a local 7 11, but I call that 7 10 and a half. Okay, uh, my family. So uh, here I come to visit one family, and her name Ni and her name Bu. Uh, Ni is regarded as the most important lady in this floating village because she's the only traditional midwife. And Bu and her husband is a fisherman. And let's come and take a look at the house. Am I behind? Are behind you? ซอลาซอลาเนี่ยนะครับเนี่ยนะออกเป็นใจใจที่มาใจอันนี้ใจนี่ใจใจเนี่ยใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใจใ
Dance night, gentlemen. Do you like it? All right. Very nice. Thank you very much once again.